Welcome to Responsive Personal Portfolio, adding page website testimonials section. While our website looks sexy so far but now we need to add other people or organizations opinions about our work in our portfolio. This web page features a stylish swiper slider displaying client quotes, photos and details. The design includes a modern testimonial card with circular navigation arrows and pagination bullets. Notice this draggable slider that lets you drag to navigate through slides, along with a grab cursor also with arrows helping navigate this slider. That's all for demo so let's go coding. Let's see this testimonial section we are going to code. We will be using these testimonial images today, as well as these font awesome icons that we have saved in our text file. Now let's start up our web page in VS Code, but before that notice that we already have a Swiper.js link in our HTML, I will share it in the description of this video as well. By the way, let's get this please subscribe to my channel over with, it makes my mom smile when she sees new subscribers, so please subscribe. If this previous section looks somehow cool then check out its video, link in the description. Now it's time for HTML now. Alright so, let's copy paste this part from the previous section and then write our code. Before we start, please note that classes named with Swiper have some rules to make it work. I don't want you guys to copy paste my code, but also to learn to use Swiper.js. For Swiper.js, use Swiper Container, Swiper Wrapper, Swiper Slion, Swiper Pagination, Swiper Button Next, Swiper Button Pref, and Swiper Scrollbar class with these precise names because it is crucial for Swiper.js to work. Considering the fact we are very scared of naming these Swiper classes perfectly, we will check the code afterwards to see if everything is named correctly. This HTML basically sets up a Swiper.js testimonial slider with a Swiper wrapper for slides and Swiper slide elements for each testimonial, including navigation buttons and pagination controls. Let's shorten the lorem text here, no one likes people that pop too much so why should my testimonial have so much gibberish? Each slide will have left and right quotation mark encompassing the quote of the client, an image of the client along with client details, at their team name BFF. If you guys are wondering about the full form of BFF then you are right because best and worst compliments are always coming from best friends. But they will definitely help you in securing you a job. Just don't tell anyone the full form of BFF. Still I will suggest not to do that in your professional website, just in case some lawyer is watching my video for no reason and may claim I am persuading people to turn evil. Anyways, in the serious note, to explain what I am about to do quickly in short, is that I will copy paste each of the testimonial slide from slide start comment to slide end comment for times and change image in each of them which means we will have total of five testimonial cards that we will apply slider animation on, each with supposedly different quote, image and client info. Now that we have all the slides set, let's create the slide pagination stuff with previous and next button outside of the testimonial slide container below swiper wrapper class. A friendly reminder to not change the swiper pagination, swiper button next, swiper button prev class names, but if you want you can add another name to these classes. I usually create class names with underscores because it's easy to copy paste the class name but here we can't do that so if you see a class name with dash and not the underscore write the exact class name just in case, to avoid trouble. Something is very wrong considering only one slide should be displaying not all because we have already added the link for swiper.js and added the swiper classes. At least we found it. Well I kept telling you guys to not mess with the swiper class names and here I am doing the same. Let's change the client names. By the way, disclaimer I have no idea about K-pop but I search some up to know the famous ones and write their names so if I made a mistake in the name, my apologies I try my best. I even wrote one dude's name as V because his other name had very hard spelling. I think he is from BTS, all I know about BTS is that my mom loves them. Others are from either Blackpink or Twice, oh no, but that's enough K-pop for me so let's go back to our testimonial section in Portfolio. Looks better so now it's time to put some makeup on this section with CSS. 
First of all, let's see all the classes and root variables that we already created in the previous videos but are using in today's video as well. I do have these classes in the link in the description too if you want so you can simply take it from there. Now that I am editing this I realized how fast these reusable classes are going so I guess you can check the link out or pause to see it. Although if you guys have been following this portfolio playlist you will see I show them almost all videos. I will put the link in the description for the entire portfolio playlist if you want to watch. I just remember to tell the first timers watching my video that I forgot to mention the squares that we have added in the beginning of HTML and now you see the CSS part of it is just the simple square shapes that you will see on large screen size moving on mouse movement. Now it's time to write some CSS for this client testimonial slider. Testy wrapper centers the testimonial slider on the page and applies a custom text color. It serves as the main container for the testimonial slider. Next we have testimonial slider that styles the main slider container. It defines the height and padding for the slider, setting it up for relative positioning. We are also going to add our infamous Flexbox row class to different HTML classes when we want to use Flexbox so we can center everything while flexing. Testimonial slide styles each testimonial slide with a specific size, background color, shadow, and rounded corners. Rather than writing the whole flexbox, let's just add the row class and change justify content to center. I will show this row class I'm using and may use again after CSS is complete. After testimonial slide, we will style the image in this testimonial. It ensures the testimonial image is circular and centrally aligned within the slide. Please know that soon we will also tweak with classes that are not invoked in our HTML that are part of Swiper.js classes. Testy content centers and vertically stacks the testimonial text content within each slide. It styles the content section within each testimonial slide. Why I keep writing flex stuff and then remember I have a class already made for it. Anyways, it's time to style the testimonial text within the testy content area. We will set the width, text alignment, and padding for the testimonial text. Remember when I told you guys we will also style Swiper.js classes not written in our HTML code. Well these shadow left and right classes hides the default shadows on the left and right sides of the slider. Now we will style the slider controls with previous and next arrows whose purpose is to style the container for the slider's navigation controls. It centers and positions the slider's navigation controls below the slides. Here we go again with the row class fiasco. Now it's time for us to style the container for the slider's navigation controls. We are gonna center and position the slider's navigation controls, which is a container for the previous and next buttons below the slides. While the swiper button next and swiper button prev classes position the navigation arrows for the testimonial slider. The next button is aligned to the right with some offset, while the previous button is aligned to the left, both with shadows and have a white color for the arrow icon itself. Initially these arrows and its buttons looked a bit old school and boring in the first demo of this playlist, but now I changed the colors to make it look better. To style these buttons together we will use slider arrow class. Slider arrow styles the circular arrow buttons with a background color and drop shadow. Do you guys ever think how awesome the first coders must have felt when their code runs successfully? Like none of us could ever understand that feeling because they created ways for us to code with code. Anyways, back to the code, where we are using filter to add drop shadow to the slider arrows. Slider arrow after adds an empty content block after the arrow button to ensure there is no visible content, but a pseudo element exists. Now we take care of the bullets under the slider. Swiper pagination styles and positions the pagination bullets below the slider. While we also add a drop shadow to each pagination bullet for makeup and fashion purposes. Finally, we now style the active class for the swiper pagination by changing the background color of the active bullet to our favorite primary color. Something is very wrong with this code, so let's fix it. I am guessing it has something to do with route class implementation where we overwrote some code. I mean just look at the beauty we are exuding with this stupidity in our web page. 
I just remember I put Rao on the testimonial slide but forgot we have 5 slides not just one. Oops, we now have to add row class on each slide. I am such a clumsy person. Let's see if it's good now so we can move on. Nope something else is also wrong, where else did we put the row class in one slide and forgot the rest of the slides? Oh right, we have 5 testy content classes, or we were supposed to add the row class not just one. I love the fact that it's still not working, what else is the problem now? Oh I almost forgot the row class has a flex wrap as wrap. Now that's better. Let's check out this row class and go straight for JavaScript. Fun fact, we won't be requiring media queries today, as it is already responsive so we will go straight for JavaScript. And here is our row class that annoy us so much. We will be using JavaScript simply to initialize a swiper instance for the testimonial slider element. It creates a cover flow effect where slides are center and looped infinitely, allowing for smooth navigation. The pagination and navigation options enable clickable pagination dots and navigation arrows respectively for easy slide control. The grab cursor true allows us to drag slides with a hand cursor like in the demo. With centered slides true and loop true, the slider always centers the active slide and loops continuously, creating a seamless browsing experience. The cover flow effect fine-tunes the slider's appearance by adjusting rotation, stretch, depth, and spacing for an immersive effect. The pagination makes bullets clickable for navigation, while the navigation option links the next and previous buttons for easy browsing. Let me just copy-paste swiper pagination just in case I make a spelling mistake. The navigation option integrates the next and previous buttons, specified by swiper button next and swiper button pref, enabling smooth navigation through the testimonial slides. This setup allows users to easily move forward or backward within the slider, enhancing the overall browsing experience. What did I do now? Let's find out and clean this mess. I'm going by line but I have a feeling that I made a mistake in next DL and Previel. I forgot that it's not one but else since last time I made that mistake. Well now it's working. Let's see what we have created and how beautiful this slider is. We will also test this testimonial slider on different screen sizes to ensure responsiveness. I think I have rambled enough already so I will shut up now and give you guys some well-deserved peace for sticking with me this long. Well this seems to be working perfectly for me so, if you have been dealing with my dead humor for 13 minutes straight then.